in governmental accounting. And governmental accounting is is really wacky. And so, but there's a reason why it's wacky. And so we're going to kind of do a case sort of like as if we're running a government. And hopefully that will help us understand why they, you know, why they do some of the things that they do. Governmental accounting, they have two sets of books, which normally we hear about two sets of books as someone doing something illegal, but it's required that they have two sets of books. They have two sets of financial statements. Um, it's it, it, it all comes it all comes down to uh, that running governments is way different than running businesses. Governments don't sell products. You know, they don't sell services for the most part. I mean, they they get their money other ways and they spend it on things that no one else will spend money on. If if the government didn't, you know. Bill Expressways, no one else would. So, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of a different thing. And what we're going to do, though, is we're going to have some budget decisions. You guys can't see what I'm doing. No, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Okay. <laughs> budget decisions. I usually get like a little uh, thing that drops down. That's not how you spell decisions. And we're going to vote on the class and then make it a budget. And you guys got extra credit points for this. And from that, we're going to uh, create a budget. And this will be extra credit. OK. We'll start out with this. And so if you could pull up the um, the case as governmental accounting introduction, he's making funny um, he's layout things. Okay, so go ahead and read through this. It won't take very long. So you can read through that.
So, um, <clears throat> all right. So you're elected mayor, and and you won the election. The previous administration had cut taxes, but they didn't cut expenditures, and they had a a big shortfall. Um, a two million dollar, two point one million dollar fund balance cushion disappeared. An emergency loan had to be obtained just to keep the police station open. And the wildly popular 4th of July festival had to be canceled for voters. This was the last straw. Okay. Okay. So, in the background, we didn't know too much about this, but 10,000 people, recognition needs, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, here is the strange thing about governmental agencies. They have to have a legal budget. <clears throat> yeah. So municip municipalities and things like that, uh, cities, states, all that kind of stuff, they all have a requirement for a legal budget. So a legal budget. <clears throat> a legal budget is a budget that basically will cover the expenditures. So a legal budget will cover the expenditures for the next year. So this is what we're talking about, that they have to have a budget that will be able to pay for those things that they're going to spend money on for the next year. Uh, usually the budgets are okay. So you started in July 1st. I'm just going to put a year in here just so you kind of see what, so we'll say 2023. And obviously, you know, it depends on the. If they go for one year, but they go from July 1st to June 30th of the next year. So this is usually what a budget goes. In. So instead of being January 1st, they start on July 1st. And usually they end on June 30th. <clears throat> and by the way, that's why we kind of that's why we have elections early in the year, February, March, we have elections, figure out who's elected, and then they get their administration going and they start working on a budget because when they take office on July 1st, uh, they're generally required to have a legal budget uh, ready to go for the next year. So, you know, and, and even if they, you know, even if they're incumbent or whatever, they win, same thing, they still have to have that budget ready going into the next year. So that's why we kind of have elections February, March, so that they we know who's going to do it, and then they get in there and they make the budget. So it's a legal budget. Now that's very different than regular accounting. 
like take a company like IBM. Do they have budgets? Yeah, they have, everyone has a budget in a, in a large company. They're, everyone's going to have a budget, but it's not legal. It's, it isn't that they're they're not required by law uh, to have those. No, they do it for planning and that sort of thing. But a budget for government agencies, those are uh, they're they're legal documents. They're legal. Um, uh, they have a legal requirement to them that they say, okay, you're going to make these expenditures. You got to have a budget that's going to cover those. So that's what a legal budget is. And this is one of the reasons why it's, it, it's really important. Budgeting is really important for government agencies. And also, the legal budget is for one year. We're not talking about 10 years or 15 years or, you know, you buy a piece of equipment that's going to last for 80, you know. We're not talking about that. It's this next year. There's a budget. If you're going to buy... An ambulance, how do you cover paying for that ambulance? If you're going to build a new library, how do you cover that? You know, all those things are budgets for this next year. So there, it's a very short period of time. And that's why we're going to have kind of a, of a strange way of accounting for it because, yeah, we want this, you know, city or whatever to go on for hundreds of years. But there's also this requirement that in the next one year, we have to really pay attention to what we're spending and because the money coming in has to cover this, this legal thing. Okay, so um, there's a, a somewhat short list of decisions that need to be made. And we're gonna make this as, these as a class. I'll put the, a poll up and we're ready to get into this, but so here are some of the things that we're going to have to make decisions on. Okay, we, we got that loan for the police department. And it's a $100,000 loan. The interest rate is 7%. This can be repaid at any time. So we can re repay it at any time we want, however much we want to pay. You want to pay off uh, 50,000 this year, you can pay off 50,000. 100,000, you can pay off 100,000. Okay, the loan can also be converted into a five year loan. Uh, an interest rate of 6%. The annual payments would be 200000 per year plus interest. Okay, so they could also convert it into a five-year loan. Every year, they have to pay off 200000 Okay, rebuilding a cushion. Most towns have about 50% of their annual budget. They'll have a surplus of about half a year. So for example, if they had a budget that's usually $6 million, they would usually have $3 million of cushion. Some might have more, some may have a little less, but they, they, they kind of try to aim it at, you know, that, um, at that you kind of like 50% of the budget, half the budget, uh, just in case something happens. You know, no one, the economy is going to go bad, you have COVID or something, you know, some wacky thing happens that uh, kind of throws a wrench into things that just to have that kind of cushion. So they don't have any cushion right now. So rebuilding that cushion is also a decision that they have to make. <clears throat> okay, replacement of the two police cars. Uh, one of the police cars was in an accident in the forest preserve. The accident was on a public road. The insurance company refused the claim. The damage to the car was estimated at thirty-six thousand. The other police car needs to have its transmission replaced. It is the second transmission in three years. The police chief wants to get rid of this lemon before any other repairs are necessary. The replacement transmission would cost four thousand dollars. They're trading in the two police cars. The new police cars would cost $89,000 each. Assume the trade-in value for each police car is the same. So they're going to get the same price for both. 
Okay. <clears throat> Fourth of July festival. So the Fourth of July festival. This is what they remember back here. They had to cancel it when people got all mad. So the fourth. Uh, Fourth of July festival was why well, the people got mad, and that was like the last straw. That was when they decided they had to replace the old government. So we have to vote on that. New windows for the city hall building. Bids were taken to replace the windows in the city hall building. The new windows would save about a thousand dollars per year in heating and air conditioning costs. Okay, use the above information, detailed budget summaries attached to make a preliminary budget for the next year, include the tax rate, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So the first thing we got to do is kind of get a handle on these things we're going to vote on. And there are budgets. On, I think there's five budgets here. So the administrative department, building department, uh, other General fund con, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here's the 4th of July stuff. We got to look at that. We'll look at that later. Oh, here's new windows. Public safety, there's a, the new um, police cars. Public works. And you'll notice that for all of these budgets, Um, they're pretty much negative. Building department, looks like they're making a little bit of money. But most of these government agencies are not profitable. And you wouldn't expect them to be. Okay. So... Let's kind of go through these and see. So, so basically, this is what happens. You have all these budgets for these departments, and these these departments they don't make money. You know, if 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 they did make money, the private sector would be doing it, right? They're government agencies; they don't make money. They have to be funded, and they get their funding from property tax for the most part. So, you know, this is what we're we're kind of looking at is these. Um, excuse me, the, the costs are what have to be covered basically by money coming in. They call it revenues, but you know, the property taxes are usually what, what, what covers those. They, they do have other things sometimes too. They have building permits, they have um, parking tickets, they have all, you know, other things, but a, a big chunk of it's gonna come from the, uh, the property taxes. Okay, so let's start kind of looking at these things. So we're gonna to have to make a decision about repaying the loan. You know, how much of this loan do we wanna repay? And how much do we wanna start putting into the cushion? Those two are gonna be kind of standalone a little bit. Now, again, the cushion of the, the head was 2.1 million. We're probably gonna to have to you know, we're not going to go that big, obviously. Probably might take a few years to get this back, but. Okay, uh, replacement of the police cars. Okay, so we have the two uh, police cars. Uh, one is going to cost 36000 And the other one would cost um, at yeah, okay. So let's look at this budget down here. So the police cars. Okay, here's the two new police cars. 
Yeah, let's make those green. Now, here is something that is unusual for government agencies. Sometimes they'll have grants for, um, you know, cities and stuff like that to upgrade, you know, sometimes they'll have a grant to upgrade their police uh, vehicles, or maybe they uh, to upgrade their um, alert system or whatever it is. So sometimes they'll have what they call grants, and these come from other government agencies. Maybe they, these might come from the state, you know, something along those lines. So notice that these cars really don't cost 89000 each because they're going to get a grant of 15000 for each one. So what's the difference between these? 89 minus 15 is 70. What is it, 74? I mean, 74. You may want to check that. You guys know it. You guys know it already by now that check whatever I do. So the real cost of those police cars is 74000 each. And by the way, those are you know, a lot of times they'll have these grants and they can only be used for what the grant is for. So if you don't buy the new police cars, you don't get the $15,000 grant. That goes away, obviously, you know, $15,000 per car. Okay, so that's the police cars. What else do we have? Oh, the wild 4th of July party. Okay, so wild 4th of July party. The cost of it is $68,000. But they also make $14,000. Yeah, and that's offset. You're right. That's offset by this $14,000. So what's the real cost of the? Forty-four. Forty-four. Right. So we did uh, cough up forty four thousand for the Fourth of July party. Oh, and right underneath there are the windows for City Hall. <clears throat> so the windows for City Hall were twenty thousand. Um, just to distinguish between these two, I'm going to make this one uh, turquoise. All right. So the windows for City Hall. See, so cost twenty thousand. And they're going to save a thousand dollars a year. All right, so these are the decisions we got to kind of make. All right, well, one of the things is kind of getting an idea of where we're at. You know, we have these deficits. This one says deficit is actually not. Oh, 
hint and you're not to get a timeline to get the come back on track. You guys, I think, <laughs> are already there. So, okay, so we have these deficits. Teacher forgot to uh, make a total here. I should say, uh, I should say net total deficit. copy these. Oh, maybe I'm not that one. Okay, so we start out with a deficit of minus two four three forty two. The 15,500 is a plus. It says deficit, but it shouldn't. You probably should say surplus here. I got um, minus three million no, you may want to check that. Is that what you guys got? <laughs> your, your silence is worrying me. I think maybe. Here. This would be the easier way to do it. Ah, that can't be right. Mm 
Maybe that is. Is that what you guys got? Three million one sixty seven. All right, I came up with two different numbers. What do you guys come up with? I got the same number. Uh, which one? The uh, the three three the uh, three one sixty seven four fifty. Oh, okay. You get this this number. Yeah. Oh, then I, this one's wrong then. Sixty seven. Okay. One, six, seven, four, fifty. Okay, very good. Okay, so this is our total deficit we have so far. Um, one thing we may want to do is just kind of see where we're at as far as the property assessment is concerned. So this is our total deficit. This is before we do any of our changes. I'm just gonna copy this down. <clears throat> now the total, um, the total value of the properties in the town are this. So we can use this to kind of see what the assessment will be. What's it doing that? Stop that. Okay. So the total property assessment was 150 million. All right, so we can figure out how much it is, what the percentage is. Now you'll notice coming up, let me go back to this. For whatever reason, I, I don't know, I guess they try they think it makes it easier for people to visualize it or something. They usually show it as per hundred dollars of assessed value. Now, as uh, you know, as numbers people, we recognize that you know these are the same thing as percentages, right? This is per hundred dollars of assessed property value. Well, then that's you know two dollars and thirty cents is two point three percent. One one dollar ninety is one point nine percent, right? If this is out of a hundred, you can just you know think of this as a percentage instead of the dollars. So, so let's kind of see what where where we're at down here. So I'm going to take the uh, three one six seven four fifty. And let's divide that by hundred and fifty thousand. Scratch that hundred and fifty million. some number I got uh, point uh, zero two eleven yes me too okay so like the two dollars and eleven cents is what we're at yep. and it, it, before it was up to um here so was that two to, it'd be like two dollars and eleven cents per Hold on. 
two dollars and eleven cents per one hundred dollars. The same thing, right? I mean, it's it's just the percentages. And this is so we're still below what it was before. I think we were at what two point three. I think. Nope, not that. Yes, two point three. Okay, so we were at two point three, right? And so not that you know that is we're still under. And people kind of know that you know, hey, we got to get back. You know, if if you want to have the uh, you know the drunken Fourth of July festival back, you're gonna have to pay more. So, all right. So we get a little bit of wiggle room here. You know, right now the way the budgets are, we're at two eleven. Yeah, let's make that green. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to, oh, I, one more thing I wanted to talk about real quickly. A lot of times these, um, you'll have things that are special assessments. We're going to, and, and they're usually for things that only affect um, a small group. For instance, a paved alley. Only those people that live on that paved alley are really going to benefit from it. So when they have it, you know, they'll vote on whether they want this uh, paved alley. And if most of those people that are on that alleyway, if they want it paved, then uh, they can uh, have the city pave it and they'll get a special assessment. Now, the reason why they have this here is other information is that this is going to be paid for by those people that have the special assessment. This is not going to be paid for by the general public. Is this going to be paid for by those individuals that have benefits? So sometimes, you know, they'll have governments that will do things for specific groups and they'll charge those specific groups for those. All right. So let's see what let's get our let's get a handle on these. Okay, so decision we have to make are we paying the loan? Um, possibly converting it into a five-year loan, rebuilding the cushion. Uh, the two police cars, you're probably going to have to think about a little bit, do a little bit more working on those because, yeah, you know, to see what you want to, what we want to do with that. Fourth of July festival, that's a, that's, that's a, that's a yes or no, right? And the windows too. So let's come down here and let's put in some of the, Uh, things that we're going to vote on. Okay, so repaying the loan. Now, we could repay the loan at any rate. I, I, mean, I don't mean rate, I don't mean like interest rate, but I mean, we could repay the principal, you know, we could pay zero on it, we could pay, we pay 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, whatever it is. And so, you know, we'll, we should probably vote on, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we get some, um, get some numbers in here to vote on. One of the options is to convert it into a five-year loan. So I'll put that first, because that's, and I think it's at 6%, if I recall correctly. Uh, the loan is currently at 7%, so we get a little bit of a break on the interest rate. Okay. Now, we don't have to convert it into a five-year loan, though. We could actually pay it, leave it at 7% and pay off, um, you know, we could pay off 50000 a 100000 you know, whatever it is. Now, the interest rate is going to be at 7%. And also notice though that it is possible to pay off two hundred thousand. You say, well, why would why don't you just convert it into the other loan? Well, if you convert any other loan, then you must make the payment of two hundred thousand the following year. It might be worth it to pay the extra one percent and have the option of changing the amount that you pay off on it. So anyway, there's you know a few options here. So 
they could convert into a five-year loan. And you don't want to throw out some numbers of what of how much of the loan we could repay. You mean like the yearly payment? Or, or just this next year, this coming year. So it's going to be like 200 for the principal, uh, 14,000 for the interest, if you are going by, by 7%. Okay, so we could pay 200,000. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's get some more numbers up there too. I'll, I'll throw some numbers up there. How about, um, I'll go on either side of it. We could pay off uh, 100,000. And let me, uh, okay, this would be at 7%. And let's put in, uh, how about 300,000? And I'm going to put one more in. It's possible to pay off zero of it. You know, we have to pay the interest on it, obviously, 7%, what is it, 70,000? But uh, you could pay zero on it, too. All right. so. We'll have that as our first thing we're going to vote on. Now, rebuilding the cushion. And this is for the next year. How much do we want to start rebuilding the cushion? And I'll put in the first one, which is zero. We have that possibility. Now, one of the things, you know, talking about this rebuilding the cushion, one of the things that we you definitely want to talk about is how many years you want to do this. Yeah, obviously you can't throw $2 million in there the first year. Um, but, you know, the question is how long do you want it to take? You know, 10 years, 15 years, whatever it is. They don't really tell us how long it took to rebuild the other one. But, um, you know, one of the things is it's not going to happen overnight. Um, so, you know, think about how, how, how and, and, and it doesn't have to be $2 million either. You know, our, our budget, what is, what is our budget at right now? Three, three million something. Three million one hundred. So, you know, half of that is like one, and, uh, close to 1.6 million. So it isn't like we have to get up to 2.1 million. Uh, rebuilding the cushion is just, Basically, rebuilding the cushion and seeing, you know, getting a little bit of breathing room in case something happens in the future. All right. So, who wants to throw out numbers besides zero? You can put it in chat too. You can private. If you don't want, your, if you don't want to be known to others, you can private. Yeah. There is no right or wrong answer. <laughs> Other than zero, zero has already been taken. Okay. 250,000, okay. Uh, let's get a couple more up here just to make it interesting. Anyone? I would say 950K. How much? 950. 950? Okay. Okay. Like that? Yep. Okay. Thank you. 
115, okay. Anyone else want to throw a number out? Three seventy-five. Okay. Very good. Oops. Okay. So these will be our options for this one. Replacement of the two police cars. Okay, so I'm going to put the options in here. We'll, we'll, we'll fill in the numbers in a second. Okay, so the option A. Replace both police cars. And then also, well, let's also put in the net cost of it. And we'll we'll figure that out in a second here. B in place one of the police cars. And we'll have the net cost for that. We'll, we'll figure out in a second. And C. And uh, E before I on that. Okay, so we got to find some numbers on these so that we can make a an educated decision here, uh, informed decision. So we can place both one or none. Okay, so. Let's look at the replacing both the police cars. Let's get the cost for that. Maybe 148K for both net cost. Yep. Yeah, and you, you look over here, or you can just multiply this by two. So yep. 148. Okay, so the cost each, the net cost each is this. You can also take 178 minus 30, get the same thing. So 74,000 times two, so that is 148. Okay, so that's one of them. Now, we have these two police cars, one of them, will cost 36,000 to repair, and the other one will cost 4,000 to repair. Which one do you think you wanna, <laughs> you wanna pay? I would fix the transmission. Yeah, yeah. If, we, if we're gonna fix one of these cars, it's probably gonna be this one, um, you know, $4,000. So let's take a look here. Well, what, so what would we be looking at? We got 4,000 for the one car. Uh, and the other one would be? 74. 74. Was that four? Was that 78,000? Yep. OK, so I'll replace one police car. 
And the last one, oops, that should be. Uh, Uh, thirty-six thousand plus four. That would be forty k. Forty. Okay. Forty thousand. Okay. So these are the options that we have for replacing the um, Okay, 4th of July festival. A, yes. Cost. It was 44,000, wasn't it? Yeah, 58,000, but they get revenues of 14. So 44,000 is for the, uh, for the July festival. So yes, we pay 44,000 for the festival or no. We pay nothing and they don't get a festival. New will windows for the city hall building. This one there's actually a right and wrong answer to. Well, I shouldn't say that. I, it, it, um, so the new windows cost 20,000. Oops. Things do. The new windows cost twenty thousand, and they're going to save a thousand a year. Financially speaking, would would this be a good idea? You could take that same twenty thousand and pay off a loan up here. So financially speaking, would this be from a financial, from a financial uh, aspect? Probably not, but it will pay for itself eventually. Yeah. Well, this is um, if you if you divide it out. Uh, it's making about 5% a year. So this is what the, um, this is what you're making on your money. Now, it, you know, the wild card here is $1,000. If it, you know, if it was more than that, it, this would be higher. If it was less than that, it'd be lower. So there's a little bit of uncertainty in this, just in, just in general. Now notice that you could make 7% on your money by paying off part of the loan up here, or 6% if it was, if we vote on this one, converting it. So financially, this is probably not what you wanna do. You know, you don't wanna, you're spending 7% 7, 7 on a loan, to make 5% on windows. However, being somewhat um, environmentally conscious, it might make sense. And, and, and one of the things too, you have to remember, what are you in government for? You're in government for the people. And there may be very many a lot of people that say, look, you know, we, we, we want an efficient government that you know, doesn't waste, uh, you know, burn fossil fuels and all that kind of stuff. So even though financially, it's probably not a very, good idea. It might be a very good idea as far as the people you're representing, what they really want. So there is a little bit more to it than just the financial part of it. And same thing with the, um, the one before that, the uh, 4th of July festival. You know, you, well, they don't need to have a party. 
Well, that's kind of what they expect. You know, the, there is this idea that it's, it's not just about, you know, uh, making the budget balance, it's making the budget balance, but also trying to do for the public what they, um, you know, what they would desire. So it is possible, even though, again, financially, the windows probably don't make too much sense, they may make a lot of sense uh, as far as what the people actually want. So let's put those in as a, um, Uh, yes. Cost is 20,000. And, you know, and, and two completely rational or whatever people very well, well come up with different ideas for those. Okay. And, and again, the, this one is a little bit more, you, you, you're right, that it's a little bit more of a, um, there, is, there is some return on this, whereas the 4th of July festival, there is no, you know, actual return other than you, you get elected again. Okay, let's, uh, well, we got stuff to vote on here, so let's go ahead and take a vote, and uh, we'll take a break, and we'll come back and look at it. All right, so let's see here, I got to. Okay, so vote on one through five, but whatever you put in for the other ones, don't really, you know. Uh, six through okay. Six through ten, you can put anything in. Because it, it's, it's going to have you do, make you uh, do those for uh, before you send the poll in. But anyway, you put anything in for those. Okay, so let me zoom out of here so we can see all the. Uh... Yeah. Okay, so here's what we're voting on, and whatever we come up with, we'll, we'll alter the budget so that they. Um, and, and by the way, we can also change these too. Um, you, know, <laughs> you know, if we go start going through the budget, we you know we start figuring out the budget and say, okay, well we got a little more money, or we're over our budget, or whatever, we can uh, change it too. So let's say this, this and uh, let's, let's go ahead and take a break then. Say be back at. Um, No, not 7 p.m. It's 7 p.m. right now. I'm sorry. 7, 10 p.m.
All right. Uh, well, here are the uh, results. There are no right or wrong answers. They're just uh, what we're going to go with. All right. So this first one is. Convert into a five year loan. Okay. Ooh, two was. Okay, so here's two. Look at that. <laughs> that was pretty, pretty spread out. Uh, let's see, three, replace one of the police cards. Okay. Fourth of July festival. Uh, number five windows. No. Okay. So what we got to do now is kind of plug these numbers in and see where we're at. All right. Uh, So converting to a six-year loan, so that'll be 200000 I didn't put that in there. <laughs> would that, I don't know, would that make a difference? Yeah, okay, so, um, so the 6%. And now this one kind of depends on when we pay it too, because if it's paid at the beginning of the year versus at the end of the year, I'm going to call this one a, a wash, but we are going to be saving 1%, say overall on the uh, on the loan amount. It really, it really does depend on, depend on when you're, you're going to pay it, but 1% of the money was 10,000. Okay, so let's see here. So the police cars, I'm going to go come up here and uh, let's see what we're doing. Okay. So the 4th of July festival is okay. The uh, windows for the new city hall that was voted down. So we will, oops. Cross that out. So we're going to save 20,000. So what will this be? 120, 400. The police cars, we're going to get one new police car. And we're also, oops. And we're also going to repair I'll say repair one, we know what it is. And it'll be minus 4,000. Okay, so what do we do? We saved um, 74,000, but then we paid off for it. So this will change by 70, I think, like that. Right, you know, so we saved seventy four thousand, but then we had to pay an extra four thousand to repair that uh, one of the police cars. So the deficit will be, you know, save seventy four, but pay out four of that, so seventy off. All right, uh, I don't think down here anything. Okay, 
Now, we can pick it 950,000. So we're going to have to add that into it. Okay, so let me see. You know what I used to do? I should go back to this thing. Okay, so this is down to... We're going to pay out 200000 from the um, loan, 950000 from rebuilding the cushion. This 44000 is already included in this up here. It's already included in there. Oops, that should be negative. And negative 200,000. Forty two two seven four fifty. So four two two seven four fifty. Check and make sure I got that right. Or two, two, seven, four, fifteen. Okay, so this is what we're going to divide by. Oops. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, point zero two eight one. Point, would you say point zero three eight? Uh, 0.0281. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, or two dollars and eighty-one cents per hundred. Okay, so yeah, so this is you know, this, and it was at what two thirty, so you, you might be able to get away with that. <laughs> And, you know, little things, too, you know, as you know, politics are politics. And the one that I always caution people about is things like this Fourth of July festival. Stuff like that is stuff that gets people kicked out of office, <laughs> no matter how, uh, you know, how uh, your, your, your intentions are good. Uh, stuff like that is, uh, you know, you, is uh is important but okay so this is what we would uh you know this is what you call for your budget and you're to tell people you're gonna pay 281 kind of a big jump up but you know at the same time they were expecting it and and two uh for stuff like this sometimes it's easier just to get one big one and then you know instead of every year going up do it all at once sometimes it's easier to float you know, people when people expect it, you know, they they bumped up a little higher than normally you would. You know, maybe you'd want to stick around two point three something. Sometimes, you know, if you just go up high and then you know, it's it, it's one and done. You know, it's 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 over. So, but anyway, so that's that's uh, you know, kind of what what people are up against now. Notice what's inherent in all of this is that these budgets. You know, the people stick to these budgets. You know, if people don't stick to these budgets, it, it can get out of whack really quickly. So controlling the budgets is huge for governmental accounting. And that's why we have this legal budget. You know, you must have a legal budget that will cover 
uh, the expenditures for the next year. So once you get that legal budget, it's very important to keep it under control. Question on that thing? Okay, let me close that and I'll save it and give you guys the extra credit. Give me one second here. Okay, more than one second. Okay. All right. Uh, next thing I want to cover is uh, we'll get started. And I don't know how far we'll get. Um, there are, well, here, let me flip it up. The, um, The government-wide uh, journal entries. Now, one of the things that um, is, is, again, it's kind of wacky about government accounting. Uh, there's two sets of books. The one set of books, the, the first one we're gonna cover is very similar to what we're used to. The accounts are very similar. There's a there's a, a few changed accounts in there, but not too many. So the the first the, this first handout is kind of almost going to be like a review of accounting 101 uh, for a lot of things, anyways. That is very similar to accounting 101 in that a lot of the accounts are going to be exactly the same. They're going to have uh, you know expenses. They're going to have uh, all these other accounts that are very um, very recognizable to us. There is a quirk to the, this one. This is the, called the government-wide one. These are relatively new. I say relatively new. They're about 30 years old. But as far as financial statements, that's really young. So these are fairly new financial statements, the government-wide ones. And they're very similar to what we've been used to as far as um, uh, regular regular old accounting with a, with a couple of, of, of twists to it. But they're very similar. So that's why I want to start out with it. The thing that isn't similar is that they have a really wacky, what we would call income statement. It's not called an income statement, but that's what it is. And we'll, we'll talk about that next week. But this week, we're going to do the journal entries. And again, these are going to be fairly familiar, almost like a counting, you know, I guess 210 is our first class here. So it'd be like kind of like a 210 review. Okay, here is a budget. We do not put budgets on our books for regular accounting. So for government, oops. So government-wide. No budget entry. And again, we didn't, we, you know, if you think about our other accounting class, we never put a budget on the books. Will companies have budgets? Of course they will, but they don't put them on the books. For one thing, they didn't happen. You know, I mean, this is a budget, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. So, government wide, we have no budget entry. So, the first page is actually fairly easy for this. You're probably thinking, well, this, this is really, I, I like this method. Okay. <clears throat> Property taxes. Property taxes are, again, what a lot of times what they'll, is 
the main source of revenues. And there is a weird thing about revenues for governmental agencies. Normally we think of revenue as something being earned. You know, how much revenue do we earn? What were the earnings, you know, the revenue earnings and all that kind of stuff. We don't earn revenues for government agencies. They don't generally don't provide a product or a service or anything like that. It isn't like you know they you give money and they give you a pair of socks or anything like that. So there is no actual earning of the money. And for property taxes, when do they recognize it? They recognize it when they can be levied. So when they levy the property taxes, that's when they recognize it as revenue. You know, because they say, well, this is not earned. It, 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 they don't they don't earn income. You know, they don't earn revenues. They earn, you know, they, their their revenues are really uh, just money coming in that will cover whatever they're looking to get. And when you pay your property taxes, you don't, it isn't like they send you something back. You know, you, you pay your property taxes and they upkeep the, you know, the city. So, okay. So property taxes were levied for 280,000. Okay, so this will be property tax receivable. What are we doing here? And I'm going to call these, um, they usually put, they put them in by the year, but also, or, or just put them in as current. Bold this whole thing. Okay. Um, we'll have estimated uncollectible. All right. So they say we're not going to collect uh, fifteen thousand. Now, there's also a kind of a strange rule, and this says that 20,000 of taxes levy will not be collected until after 60 days into the next year. Okay. So here's the wacky 60 day rule. You can count them as revenues for the next year. So let's say that the starts on July 1st. You can go all the way to June 30th, one year, and then you go 60 days past June 1st, whatever that is. July has what, 31, so the 29th of August or something like that. Anyway, you can go 60 days, those that you expect to collect within the 60 days after the end of the year, you count those as revenues in the current year. You say, why is that? <laughs> I don't know, this is the rules. Um, I imagine this because you know that you'll be paying off for things. You know, in that in that following sixty days, you'll be paying off um, obligations from the previous year. But anyway, there's a sixty day rule. Now, if you collect it after the sixty days, it's still going to be revenues. We're going to be deferred. So we're going to defer revenue here. And that and anything to collect in the next year will be um, picked up as a revenue in the next year. So these deferred revenues next year will be regular revenue. And the rest of this will be property tax revenue. Um, whatever that is. 280 minus those other two. Forty-five. 
So this is going to be our property tax revenue that we're going to recognize uh, in this period for the next year. And again, it's not earned. You know, you put this receivable on the books. This is an asset going up. There's revenues. They're going up. You know, once we levy the taxes, it's immediately counted as revenue. There is no earning of the property taxes. Okay. Uh, in the mode of boring is silly, let's do one more. Because when you got to work out the uh, percentages, though. All right, I think you should have got uh, 475 for the property tax revenue. So you're going to have some that are just not collectible for whatever reason. Uh, people go bankrupt, people leave the country, people die, whatever it is. Um, and then these deferred ones, you're still going to collect them, but not until the next year after 60 days. So the next year you'll pick up those as revenue. Okay, so revenues are kind of a, a little bit wacky in that they are um, um, it's when they're levied, not when they are earned, because they're not they're never going to be earned. Okay, uh, number five has to do with uh, another thing about property taxes is that they will be, uh, property taxes, they're, they're on the books for, you know, incoming year and people are expected to, to pay them. If for whatever reason they don't pay them, 
they get reclassified as delinquent taxes. Delinquent taxes mean a couple different things. Well, first of all, the, the taxes are still there, but also a lot of times they'll have penalties added onto the taxes as part of our, you know, they're trying to make people uh, pay for them, pay, pay up the taxes. But anyway, so you're going to have taxes that are reclassified from being current to being delinquent. So that's what this next problem is kind of about. It's about, okay, you levy the taxes, you collect some of them, those that you don't collect will go into being um, uh, classified as delinquent. Okay, so it starts out kind of the same as we did before. Uh, this time it says all the taxes will, will be collected in 60 days, but 10,000 will be estimated to be uncollectible. And so we'll have um, the way we just did previous page. Okay, as of June twenty fourth. No, I do 24th. I'm sorry, June 30th of 2024. Um, 365 of the property taxes have been collected per the journal entry. Okay, so we got this journal entry up here, and they tell us that $365,000 worth of these have been collected. So, what's the journal entry going to be? What do we collect? Property tax revenue will be credited for 365. So yeah, so we're gonna have, so we collected 365,000, so those will be, that'll be cash. Yep. Debited for the amount and credited for the property tax revenue. Uh, well, it'll just be for the 365. Yep. And they no longer, Whoever paid this you know, or paid their taxes, they no longer owe us. So we got to take off this property taxes receivable. Yep. Three sixty five. Okay. I know I left so much room here for these. Um, on June 30th, the current electoral property deck is reclassified as delinquent. Okay, so how much of the current property taxes do we still have left? Oops. I want to So we still have, what is that, 35? The difference yeah. between those two? Okay, so 35,000. So we still have these property taxes receivable, current, we still have 35,000 of those on the books. So we have to take those off. So those are a debit. My debits aren't lined up. Now my credits aren't lined up. Who made this stupid handout? I don't know. Okay, so so we still have a debit of thirty five thousand there, so we have to get rid of that.
Oh, I know what it is. It's when I do the bolding. That's why it gets all wacky. Okay, so we still have 35,000. We got to take those off the books. And, and by the way, one of the reasons why we're taking these off the books is that on July 1st, we're going to have another entry like this go on the books for the next year. So these will be the current ones on July 1st. So on June 30th, we got to take these that are still hanging around off the books as current. And these will be property taxes, receivable, delinquent. So we've reclassified this from being current to being delinquent. Now, we also have to do the same thing for this. Let's make that green. The estimated uncollectible current, these two go together. So this 10,000 now is for estimated uncollectible delinquent. So let's see, what is that? A, that's a credit, so we have to debit it. And 10,000. So we have to reclassify this as estimated uncollectible delinquent. So this will this is what will be left from those taxes from you know the current year that just ended. So those will become delinquent. And you know, starting 7 1 20, 24, we'll have a whole new journal entry for the current year go on the books. These will still be on the books as delinquent, and we're not going to forget about them. Hopefully, we'll collect them. At least 25,000 of them we hope to collect. 10,000 we probably won't, and they'll have to be written off at some point. OK. Um, Okay, one of the things, and uh, this kind of goes hand in hand with it. I don't know why I didn't put those all on the same page. I could have easily done it. <laughs> There's tons of room up here. Um, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, I'll, I'll condense this handout. It won't help you guys. Oh, and I actually will help you guys because I'll, I'll do it for the, um, these are government wide. We're also going to have a fund accounting handout that's exactly the same, except that it has uh, different journal entries. Okay, so interest and penalties. Similar to what we did originally, it'll be, you know, you, when these uh, are delinquent, a lot of times you'll have interest and penalties come into play too. So you'll have interest and penalties receivable. Thirty-five thousand. You'll have an estimated uncollectible. And I'm going to abbreviate this.
It's going to go on the other line anyways on this. That's made on collectible system penalties was what, 8,000? And we're going to count that as revenue. It's levied, it's a tax, it's levied, and so this will be interest and penalties revenue. Twenty-seven thousand. So we'll pick up revenue for those two. And a lot of times the interest and penalties are, you know, a pretty high percentage because if you think about it, if they couldn't pay the regular taxes, a lot of times they're not going to be able to pay the interest and penalties either. So a lot of times the estimated on collective will be kind of high on those two. Let's stop here. Okay. Yeah, so this is just, you know, you, you, you'll levy these, and just like levying the taxes, once you levy them, you'll pick them up as uh, revenue. Like, it still follows the same rules, though, that they would be collected in the first, it, in the 60 days after year end, they would, they would have to be collected, be counted as revenue. Same revenue rules apply. Okay. All right, that's enough of that. Um, so next week we'll finish up this handout and uh, it will go into the financial statements for government wide. They're very similar, to, except with the exception of the income statement, they're very similar to what you've been seeing, you know, your whole accounting career. Uh, so, but um, yeah, there's only one wacky. All right, uh, any questions? Okay, I'll see you guys uh, next week. We'll continue with 16 and 17. Oh, and oh, uh, we, we do have something to turn in. We have the, um, no, not that. Uh, you can turn in the uh, intro case. Turn in the intro case, and those of you that took, pay, uh, took part in the uh, poll, I'll give extra credit to you. Okay, any questions? All good. Thank you so much. All right, have a good evening, guys. No, yeah. Have a good Thanks, night. Professor. Bye.